So, you want to install Stable Diffusion locally? Hey, if I can do it, so can you. I will try to make this a very quick and easy to follow tutorial, but if it's easier for you to take it step by step, you can also check out my article on this exact topic. It will take you through the exact same steps that I'll be showing you in this video. Let's dive in. I will show you in this tutorial how to install Automatic 11.11. It's a popular open source UI tool for stable diffusion. It has many talented, incredible people working on it all the time. It's frequently updated and has many advanced feature. Follow this tutorial and soon you'll be able to generate your own AI images. Now before we install it, let's make sure your system and hardware meet the requirements to run stable diffusion smoothly. If you know your computer meets the requirements, you can skip to the next part in the timestamps below. The more powerful your computer, the faster and more enjoyable your AI generation will be. But not to worry, if it's not powerful enough, you can still use it, just will take a bit longer. Stable Diffusion was developed to be processed on NVIDIA GPUs, but it can also run on AMD or Intel, though it won't be as easy to install or run as fast. So these are the basic Stable Diffusion minimum requirements. Graphics card, GPU, 4 gigabytes minimum VRAM, though I suggest 8 gigabytes at minimum for better performance. Processor CPU, 4 core will suffice, though you can go with a weaker one as well. RAM, 8 gigabytes will do, but might cause memory issues. You need Windows 10 or higher. And for storage, 10 gigabytes minimum for installing everything, but I suggest closer to 200 for all the AI models and for your generated images. This is my stable diffusion system setup. Honestly, it's been almost a year since I was generating AI images and I did not start with this setup, but because I'm generating a lot of them, I've upgraded over time. And I find this new PC build to be very enjoyable and fast. If you're not sure what you have, here's how to check out your GPU and CPU. So for your GPU, you have to go into settings, then system, select display and scroll down to related settings. Now select Advanced Display. Your GPU's make and model should be shown under Display Information. Click Display Adapter Properties and look for a number next to the dedicated video memory to see how much VRAM your GPU has. Now to check your CPU and RAM, go back to Settings, System, scroll down and select About, and look for Device Specifications. And now you know all of your settings. So are you ready to try installing Stable Diffusion now? Let's go. For the first step, we need to install Python. You need it to run the Stable Diffusion locally. Don't install the latest version as it may not work. I use and recommend Python version 3.10.6. So just open that. All the links are in the blog post and I will also leave them in the YouTube description. So here's the Python 3.10.6. If we scroll all the way down, we can download the Windows installer 64-bit. When you click on it, it should download. When you open it, before you click install now, make sure you select add Python 3.10 to path. Without this option turned on, stable diffusion won't work. Then you can click install now and wait for the process. I won't be doing it since I already have Python installed. Now, step two, we need to install Git. It's a code repository management system. We will need it to set up and update Automatic 11.11. So we're gonna go to their official Git for Windows page right here, and then you will just click download. It should download shortly. Now for the settings here, you don't really need to select anything, but make sure the option get from the command line and also from third party software is selected. It's very important. And then just go through the options by clicking next. There's really not much to it. All right, you're halfway there. Now we need to clone web UI automatic 1111. This is the longest step, but if you follow along, you will do just great. First of all, we need to create a new folder named Stable Diffusion, or whatever you want to call it, anywhere on your computer. But remember, you will need at least 10 gigabytes of space, so choose accordingly. As you can see, I created a new Stable Diffusion folder. It is currently empty, but not for long. We need to click on this path, type in CMD and hit enter. Now this window shows up. Next up, we need to clone the UI. To do that, we're going to go to the Automatic 11.11 GitHub page. Again, link in the blog post and the YouTube description. And this is the place where all the magic happens. We need to click on the code button and copy this link. Now that it's copied, go back to this open window, click once 
and type in git clone space and paste the link that you copied by hitting control V. Now that that's there, hit enter. And now all the information is cloning. As you can see on the left, we have a new folder that wasn't there before. Let's double click and now we have all of these files here that will help us run Stable Diffusion. Step four, download Stable Diffusion model from Hugging Face. Click on the link, scroll down, and here in the original GitHub repository, download the weights. There's two different files. You only need one of them. It's up to you which one. If you will ever decide to train your own model, this is the model you will use. If not, then this one is perfectly fine. So just click on it and wait for the download. It might take some time depending on your internet since it is quite a hefty file. Now that you've downloaded your model, it should be in your download folder. So copy it or cut it and open your new stable diffusion folder. Go to models, stable diffusion, and it says here, put stable diffusion checkpoints here, which is exactly what we're gonna do. If you copied or cut it from the downloads, you can just hit paste right here or type in control V. And now you'll have to wait a minute or two for the file to be copied to this folder. Guess what? You are all done. You can now begin generating AI images. That wasn't so hard, was it? All you need to do is go back to the original folder, right? Stable Diffusion Web UI, scroll down, and there's this file called Web UI dash user dot bat. This is the file that will start your automatic 1111. But if you want, here's a few things you can do before you run it. So if we right click on it, show more options, edit, this is what the user bat file looks like. We can make some adjustments to it. So for one, Automatic 11.11 comes out with new updates quite often and you can update it manually each time or you can set it to automatic updates. I set it to automatic updates and to do that, you have to edit this file. You have to type in git pull, right? And that will pull the automatic updates and install them for your Automatic 11.11. If you want new features, this is the way to go. And then I like to type in pause just so I can make sure I know when an update was done and file save, close it. And now you can actually run Automatic 11.11. So here I opened it, it went through the git poll and it says already up to date because we just installed it. Pressing enter to continue and it's going to install requirements, which may take five to 10 minutes to set everything up. So give it time. All the next times you will open it, it will only take a minute or so. So it's just this one time. If it looks like nothing is happening, that's okay. Still walk away from your computer for five to 10 minutes, just give it time. All right, so I'm gonna close that because I don't really wanna install it. I already have Stable Diffusion installed. It's the exact same as yours. The only difference is I already have some other models installed, some other LORAs. So I press enter and now it's going to start the process. Yours will look slightly different to mine because I have ControlNet installed and other cool things that help me create better AI images, but that's for another video. So here is your local URL link. Control click it or copy it and open it in your browser. All right, you did it. Now you are officially a Stable Diffusion Automatic 1111 user. If this is your first time in the interface, it's pretty easy though it might look overwhelming. Yours also might not look like mine because I have some extra extensions here that you might not have, but inside the extensions, you'll be able to get them if you wanted to. So here is your text to image tab. This is the tab you'll spend most of your time in. This is just a quick one minute overview. Type your prompt here, sunflowers in a vase, oil painting, masterpiece. We can add art by Sargent. The art of prompting is a completely different topic and I might make a video about it soon. Here you put in what you don't want. You don't want it to be low resolution, photo, and let's say you don't want a person there. So you include these things. Now here at the top are all of your models. I have quite a few, but you've probably downloaded this one or this one. So if you select it, well, you don't really have to select it if that's the only one you have, but you will use this model to generate your masterpiece. Here are the sampling methods, which also take time experimenting, how many steps you wanted to take, you have your width, height, how many, 
of them you want. Let's say we want to generate two. And this is a seed. It's going to be random. But if you want to play on a specific image, you can select it to be a specific seed. I know this might sound confusing, but you've got this. It only takes time playing. So let's hit generate. And this will be our first AI generated image. This is the first one. And this is the second one. Now for the checkpoints, you can download new checkpoints by going to this website called CVTI. Be careful though, in CVTI.com, there's a lot of uh, not safe for work imagery or models. So you can adjust that here. If you have it on safe, you will only see safe pictures. If you choose everything, then you better not be doing this at work or in a public place. All right, so here we have all these different checkpoints. You can filter them by checkpoints and other stuff, but let's just say checkpoints. And you can say in the last year, what are the highest rated or most downloaded, for example. And then you can download any of these models. Let's say Dream Shaper. You can see how other people use it to generate stuff. And for example, let's say you like this one. You can look at their prompt, the negative prompt, the sampler they used, model, step, CFG scale, seed, clip skip, all of it. And if you scroll down, you can also see other artworks by many different people who use this model. And you can even upload your own if you wanted to. All you have to do is download the model and then paste it into the same folder that you pasted your stable diffusion model in. Let's say we like this one. We see this is the seed that we use to generate it. So let's copy the seed and paste it here. Now that this is the seed for this image, let's test how the Dream Shaper would do with the exact same prompt, the exact same seed, just a different model. Let's hit generate and we have a completely different image. To look at all the images you generated, you don't have to hit save. You can just open it in the folder and it will be saved to wherever you have your stable diffusion in outputs, text to image, images. And here we have all three of them. Congrats on setting up stable diffusion. If you want to see 40 different ideas of things you can generate in stable diffusion, check out this video. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!